At that point, this road trip, and the last game of the road trip is on Wednesday in Chicago, so we will probably see him soon. There's a Jacob Toppin was unavailable today and tweaked his ankle. And there's the Villanova reunion. So the starters played over 25, 26 minutes tonight. Uh, Brunson, the usual play, high score, and Bridges provide an offense. Oh, gee, very offensive minded tonight. Yeah, Bridges led the way with 30 minutes. Oh, what did you say? I didn't say thanks for the trade. I was about to finish. I was joking with Tibbs about um, not being able to finish in a long time. Um, I wasn't talking to Tibbs. Um, I saw the clip. I wasn't talking to Tibbs. I didn't say anything about the trade. It was in a general direction. Um, and, you know, obviously they had me on, on the video saying it. Um, and I'm not there anymore. I play competitive. I wear my heart on my sleeve. And, um, all it was. It was amazing. I wasn't expecting it. No, no. But like I said, there's there's absolutely nothing but love um, from my end to the organization. And obviously, them showing the video saying thank you and including me in the video with Julius is, is, is special to me. And, you know, um, I was trying to pay, pay attention to an ATO and now I'm looking up and I'm looking down, looking up. So, um, but it was, it was special. You th what do you think, CP? You, you you haven't even answered. Is this all a show? Is this sports? No. What, what, what you you think? Oh, you think it's real? You think Absolutely. It's bad blood. It's, Absolutely. You think it's full it's bad real. blood, bro? Is it, I I mean, look, I'm I'm sure they're still friends. They're still boys, you know. And I nobody was there to to see what happened there. But for a little static to happen on the court like that, like yeah, there's there's some bad feelings there. How could it not be? Mm. You know what I mean? How could it not be, man? I think it's all. I think it's all gonna roll over, man. I don't really think it's that big of a deal, personally. Yeah. Probably not. But but I'm saying, but you you're you're asking me if if it if it was you know just a little bit of nothing. No, I don't think it was nothing. I thought DiVincenzo at the gate was trying to send a message to them, whether it was that that was just competitive energy or not. Oh, for sure. He was. He I was, was feeling that. You salty, man? Hey, the, everyone's gonna say, hey, I'm the one that you should have kept. Who? Look, we will never know the full, like, true thoughts of any player, right? Yeah. But there's definitely that ego. Like, to get to that high level, man, you got to have an ego. You got to have that confidence thinking that you're always going to be the best on any given night, no matter right. if you're uh, the 15th man on the bench or if you're the MVP in the league. So he definitely feels some sort of way saying, look, you probably should have kept me because this is what I can do, right? Yeah. And he's going to prove that. He's going to try to prove that. Every single night. Look, he felt he probably felt that way when he didn't get a contract that he deserved and he came to the Knicks. And he's like, look, I'm going to be the best shooter you've ever seen. He's probably feeling that way now being traded. Be like, yo, you should have kept me because I had a lot more to offer. You didn't even see it. Yeah. So, yeah, the, he probably feels that way. But I still think at the end of the day, I think this will all like blow over. and No one's really going to think twice about it. Uh, Mike from Michigan. Salute to Mike, man. How you feeling, bro? Doing good, fellas. How y'all doing? Good, man. Good to hear from you, man. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, real quick, two quick points, man. And um, on the Dante thing, and, you know, I know there's been a lot of talk about the trade and, you know, the timing, I think, maybe surprised most people. I know it didn't surprise CP, but it surprised a lot of us. And, um, you know, as you said, it's a, it's a business and things happen. But, uh -huh. you know, I think from Dante's perspective, I mean, there's an understanding that there's just going to be some hurt feelings. You know, you come off of a year where they're talking about building this culture, it's all the Nova Knicks stuff. Then Brunson signs his extension, and he talks a lot on this podcast about how part of why he took less was to keep a certain core together. Dante's probably thinking, well, I'm definitely a part of that core, right? I'm, I'm, I'm the homie's best friend, and I'm coming off a career year. So, you know, that causes tension and that'll, you know, that's their private business as far as how that, you know, impacts their relationship. But I think that was just some of the initial of that plan out. Yeah, you know, I agree. Really after that trade happened. Here's Steph Bondi, insider for the New York Post on the Dante DiVincenzo situation. He said DiVincenzo said he was joking with Tibbs about not being able to finish 
Dante said he, when he was at the foul line, he said, Dante said he never said thanks for the trade. However, the stuff with Rick Brunson wasn't joking. However, including when he looked at the Knicks bench, not at Tibbs, which is what I've originally thought, and said, this is what happens when they let you run the show. And Dante DiVincenzo says, my relationship with Jalen, that's my brother, my best friend. That's a separate relationship. I said, I'll talk about that privately with Rick and figure that out. So clearly him and Mick got static. Mm. And, and, and that's who he was talking to on the foul line. Everybody said, oh, he's talking to Tibbs. About he wasn't saying that to Tibbs. It didn't, that didn't really make sense. So there we go. So it was Rick the, the entire time. Uh, yeah, I guess so. You know, so there's. There's no need to speculate. There, well, who there else is, is he talking to on that bench? It's a brand new bench. There is friction. There is bad blood. You know, there's who no, is he talking there's no, to, Sam? There is no speculating there. He's not happy. Period. He's not happy. You know? And I think Mike from Michigan kind of hit it on the head, man. You know? It's a tough, tough business, bro. Especially the, happens, the, Minnesota, the Minnesota winters. 